But the next personality I'm talking about is the master of kind of leading a very colorful life, if I can say so. And the name of this personality is Girish Chandra Ghosh. Now Girish Chandra Ghosh was very famous as a playwright and a theatre producer in Calcutta in his time. Very famous, very rich, well to do. Again, you know, he likes womanizing, he likes drinking, no difficulty. And this Girish Chandra Ghosh is running the Star, Temp uh, Star Theatre in Calcutta, very famous theatre called Star Theatre in, 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 in Calcutta. One day he hears that this, this Ramakrishna Dev from Calcutta, from Dakshinesha Sori, has come to see the play Chaitanya Leela. He said, okay. Uh, the doorman said, should we charge him? He said, well, don't charge him, but everybody else with him, charge them. <laughs> Let them come. But he said, don't you think you should come and say hello to him or invite him? He said, can't he get off the carriage by himself? Very rude. No problem. And he was watching from the window and see Ramakrishna's face has become a little bit, you know, you know, disappointed or kind of saddened. Doesn't matter. Comes, watches the play, goes away. And the interaction continues and Girish is not very convinced by this personality but continues to interact in a very robust manner with him, challenging him almost every time they meet. He keeps challenging him, threatening him, saying even this, is, this can't be right. And Ramakrishna continues to be very soft, very kind, very gentle to him and continues to interact with him. Then one day he said, Girish, can you do me one favor? Something very great is inside you. It's trying to kind of pop out, you know, show its colors. Do one favor to me. Just repeat the name of God twice a day, twice a day. The rest will happen. At morning and at night, repeat the name of God once. That's all I'm asking. And he said, look, I've got such bad habits. Because this is how you would visit him. Do you know how you would visit him? He would go to the house of ill repute. After he finished there with his bottle of whiskey, he tell the driver and the uh, in horse and carriage, take me to Dakshineshwar. He'll appear in the middle of the night and, you know, kind of reeling from being drunk, knock on the door of Ramakrishna, sit with him and say, huh, I'll come to talk to you. And Ramakrishna would get up and say, yes, let's talk. And then as soon as he came, he told the man, go and get his bottle from the carriage, bring it here. This is the way he's interacting. This is the way he's talking. You think he's a sinner of the sin, you know, the highest sinner. And yet he's talking like that with him all the time. So Girish repeat the name of God twice. He said, look, you know my condition. I can't control anything. I can't be sure I'll repeat it day and night. I can't do it. I can't even promise you that I'll repeat the name of God twice in a day. I can't promise you that even. Sorry. It's the Guru is trying to you know, negotiate some terms with the disciple and the disciple says, no, that's not good enough. Then Ramakrishna said, okay, in that case, give me the power of attorney. I will repeat the name of God twice on your behalf. He can do this stuff, stuff like that. <laughs> give me your power of attorney. He said, that is easy. You got my power of attorney. From now, I don't need to worry. I can drink, get drunk, visit the house of ill repute, have fun. You repeat the name of God on my behalf. I'm, I'm free. Do it, he said. I give you power of attorney. See, there was a business a transaction taking place without Girish realizing. He has given away everything. When you give a power of attorney to somebody, that means they can dictate everything. Next time when they met, and Girish said, you know, I am going to do this. Ramka, shush. You can never use the word I. Your power of attorney is with me. So you have to say, if Ramakrishna wishes. <laughs> you can never say I anymore because that's what power of attorney means. I have got power of attorney on your whole life now. You can't never use the word I, I. You can't do anything. You say, if God wills. From now on, say, if God wills. Everything you say, say, God wills. You don't have. You say, this is, I didn't realize all that. You know, that my personality is gone. It's they pinch that. You know? But let me just tell the story. Let me take, go fast. This Girish, who appeared to be the most worst sinner, became one of the closest disciples of household of disciple of Ramakrishna. He cried tears again and again, said, How rude was I to this God man who was coming to visit me? How rude could I have been? He would do everything to appease Ramakrishna from now on. And do you know what happens in later stage? At later stage, in, 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 you know, then Girish continues. He would tell his friends, his drinking disappeared because the power of eternity was gone, everything started to disappear. Drinking disappeared, womanizing disappeared, became a great devotee. And he would just meet these disciples, Ramakrishna, chat with them, interact with them. Do you know what he told one, one, some of his disciples? He said, look, if I had known how graceful, how big is the grace of this Ramakrishna, I would have drunk more whiskey. 
<laughs> because he would have forgiven anything. He said, I have drunk enough number of... You no, know, he used to see, he used to boast. He said, I have drink, drunk enough whiskey that if you put them end to end, it would reach the moon. He used to boast about it. He said, but if I had known what majestic, graceful person I am in front of, who could, who could forgive me any sin I would have committed, I would have committed even more. If I just found out, if I just found out a bit earlier. <laughs> look at the language, look at the mannerism. Tremendous devotion, Rio, and nothing but purest of devotion flowing in the rest of his life. You see, when he was about to die later, I'm just deliberately fast forwarding the story. When he was about to die, he was ill, and some of his disciples would visit him. And one day, he was sitting there, and some disciple walked in. He said, Can you see that slipper? He said, Yes. Bring that slipper and hit me on my head. I see, do you talk like that? So why do you want to, why should we, you are ill and you want you me to pick up the slipper and hit you on the head as well? Come, he said, pick up the slipper and hit me on the head. He said, why? He said, I tell you why. Just now I was thinking, what is going to happen to me when I die? What a stupid thing to think about. I am sitting at the grace of this super personality. Why am I worried about what will happen to me at die? So I am an idiot. Sorry, I need to be beaten up. Bring the slipper. <laughs> it was that love, that closeness. You see, it's, 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 let me all get, touch on one other thing. This Ramakrishna remained, remained hidden from the rest of the world in the sense that nobody knew what personality was this Ramakrishna. He was almost, even, even the people were very close, even these close disciples couldn't discern whether he just a great bhakta, uh, a, an avatar, who is he? They were trying to suss him out and they couldn't, even they were struggling. Even Vivekananda, until last minute, wasn't sure who is this, what great person. Because, as I said, his ordinariness was very deceptive. So very few people recognize what this personality is all about. You see, one person who had no difficulty was this Girish Chandra Ghosh. Nobody else, no other disciple could recognize the majesty of this person, except this because of all this power of eternity nonsense. When Ramakrishna was suffering and he was about to pass away, just a few months before, on the 1st of January in 1886, he was suffering, very severe, very ill, in a garden house in Calcutta. And on that day, he had just enough strength to be able to walk and come out of his room. And he came out of his room and started walking on the pathway in the garden. And under the tree, he was sitting, some of the Ramakrishna's monastic as well as householder disciples, and chatting and worried about Ramakrishna and talking about him. And Ramakrishna came near, you know, putting a little shawl on his head, he came near. And as soon as he came, the disciples bowed down to him. And um, Ramakrishna jokingly told Girish, Girish, what are you telling people about me? What, what, new, what, are you spread, what kind of things you are spreading about my, my, myself? And Girish, without any hesitation, fell down on his knees with folded hands. He said, ah, you are asking me what I am saying about you? Let me tell you. Him who the Vedas cannot define, the Upanishad and the Vedas and the Gita cannot define or describe. You are asking me to describe that? They fail to describe you. How do you expect me to describe you or define you? When he said the Ramakrishna, the shawl went off. For the first time in his life, eh, and the only time in his life, he showed his true colors. He became different. Part. Otherwise, always a humble, yes, a devotee, yes, mother, like that. On that particular morning, on the 1st of January in 1886, called a Kalpata Rude, Ramakrishna stood up, his, his shawl thrown away. He looked at the disciples. The whole atmosphere got charged up. Completely, they all got lifted up. And they all started to feel, you know, tears of joy flowing from their eyes and the hair standing on end. Real experience of spiritual. The whole lot of them lifted. He looked at them saying, what do I, what do you want from me? What do you want? This is called Kalpataru, the wish-fulfilling tree. Anything you want, you get it. He was in that mood. He said, what do you want? Every disciple started to sing and dance and circle around him, you know, like, like, like a, like a oh, merry-go-round. And all came in front of him and asked for something. Some wanted to see the deity of their choice. Suppose I love Krishna. I want to see Krishna. He said, look. And he would see Krishna. Various disciples asked various things which will remain private. But one person called Upen Babu said, money, <laughs> whatever. He became an 
in no time he became a millionaire in Calcutta with this cheroot, you know, with a with cigar, you know, wandering around, Upen Babu, the great publisher. Everything they asked, everything they asked, they got. And who, who set this set light to this whole phenomena? Girish Babu. Because he knew that he was dealing. You see, the others were struggling to make sense and try and try and classify this person. Is a bhakta, a great bhakta, who is he? And this Girish Babu had no difficulty. He said, the Vedas de- fail to define you, classify you. Why are you asking me? And that was enough to, to spark, to open up their doorways. He said, what do you want, my boy? Anything. Kalpataru. And that particular day is very famous and it's still celebrated as the Kalpataru day. And the person who ignited it is this very humble, if you like, this kind of wayward disciple of Ramakrishna called Girish Tantra Gosh. In the final moment of his life, Girish Chandra was lying in bed, looking very tired, about to give up his body, and somebody recorded this. Suddenly he lit up, he sat up, felt very excited. He said, look, he's a dramatist, dramatist. His whole life was play acting, and playing and writing plays. So a person with this stature requires a special, if you like, exit point, you know, his cue. He suddenly sat up on his bed and said, ah, master, you come, let's go. <laughs> and he just passed away. But this is, this is, when you store this, it will make you feel, why, this stuff like that can happen? And his exit was also like dramatic, you know, <laughs> oh, master, you come, let's go. That's how he finished. 